Martin. I am uh, settled here in Outreach Building at University Park on a bit of a steamy, uh, it's not getting, uh, it's not uh, raining at the moment, but it may be any moment here. And uh, I'd like to welcome you to this COIL conversation. This is, uh, I'm not sure, Brad, what number this is for us, but I'm going to, 12, there's something like that. Yeah, we've done a, quite a few of these. And uh, it seems to be a neat format to be able to share new ideas and technologies uh, that are emerging and get, engage our community a bit into conversations about uh, what might be coming down the road. So I'm really excited today to share with you a project uh, and a product with um, a colleague of mine, Prabhu Subbumarian, who is in London, actually. And uh, Prabhu and I have been working on this project. He'll see I'm now taking some ownership for his product there, but uh, I have been, I have been um, involved because I've really resonated. Uh, hi, David. I've really resonated with the, uh, the product and um, from the very beginning have thought this to be an, an interesting and exciting potential platform for some work that is new to the way we think about doing education in um, in, through technology interfaces. So uh, I'm going to let Prabhu uh, introduce a little bit. I think he may also have some colleagues with him on, online. He may introduce those. But uh, Prabhu, if it's okay with you, I just want to tell the audience why I was so excited about this um, project co-learner and uh, have been so passionate about trying to see it get used into an environment. And I'll also describe a little bit about how I'm planning on using this. So yeah, for a long that. time, I have struggled with the challenge of um, collecting and aggregating learning resources into a coherent, manageable um, system that I can have both my learners use and myself use and access and manipulate in different ways. Then I tried Google Docs and Google Sites and you know blogs and different kinds of technologies, and they never quite got me to where I could uh, really collect all of my resources into one place and be able to build learning activities around those resources. And then um, I started talking with uh, Prabhu about two years ago, probably, about an idea he had in incubation, uh, and it's grown into this product called CoLearner that uh, Prabhu is the CEO of the company and uh, has been just wonderful to work with in terms of addressing the needs in higher education of a curation and information management tool that is more than just a database of, of how we collect and store data. It also allows us to act on that information and he'll share with us some of those activities. So. Um, some of you know I'm involved in this Leadership Learning Institute here at Penn State, and uh, we have, uh, so this is the class I teach each, each year. It's a, a leadership development program. It's a five-month program, and it's a blended. So we have some face-to-face -face events, we do things online, and then we uh, gather at a conference in October. And for that program, uh, and I have participants who are literally around the world, yep. um, for that program, I've, I've always struggled with how do I get them the, the learning, the reading resources they might need, the, the videos they, I might like them to see, and, and also how do they interact with that material. And that's where when I saw CoLearner and started talking to Prabhu and, and, and understanding the way he sees information management and learning uh, resource management, I got very excited. And uh, he's been wonderful to work with in in helping to build the system to meet the needs of educators. And so we're really excited to have Prabhu and his team with us today. Uh, I'm going to shut up and so I get a chance to turn it over to Prabhu. But I, I do want to put a plug in for one thing while I have you online. And that is next Tuesday, Prabhu will be with us here in State College and we'll be doing a BYOP, which is a new COIL type event called Bring Your Own Problem. So I'd really encourage you uh, to um, think a little bit about today as we're going through the presentation and learning about CoLearner, how might this address a, a problem or a challenge you may have in the work you do. So I'm sitting here with my colleague, uh, David Sylvia, uh, who, who helps manage the programs that the World Campus op operates. And the moment I saw David, I thought, hmm, CoLearner could present David with an interesting tool 
because he also works with a wide collection of different kinds of resources. And um, so I, I appreciate David being here and would challenge the rest. I, I know a lot of the folks on, online here today. It's nice to see, see you, uh, Ike in particular. I haven't seen you for a while. Good to see you on, online. Um, yep. Think about, the, you know, challenge yourself to think about how you might use this type of a tool to do some things differently in the way you think about online learning. So with that, Prabhu, I'm quiet and I'm going to turn it over to you. But welcome to Penn State and to our Quirrell conversation. Thank you, Larry. Uh, good morning and good afternoon, uh, everyone. So this is our second uh, COIL talk. Just last year, um, September, uh, we launched CoLearner as part of the first COIL talk. I, I explained how I'm going to redefine collaborative learning as we know it. And like, yeah, people were like, uh, oh, good luck. Um, September, so this is May, I think, uh, yeah, in the last eight, man, eight nine months, I think we've, we've come very far now. We have a lot of ex Exciting things, uh, a lot of things to uh, actually. Yeah. Very excited. And like Larry touched, we actually started as a collaborative learning platform. So I said I'll redefine collaborative learning as we know it and stuff like that. And then the more we uh, started exploring, the more we uh, started working, the more we uh, learned a, a lot about learning and teaching. And we're kind of now cost, starting to call ourselves as a personalized collaborative learning platform. So I will start with explaining what personalized collaborative learning means. And then I will say, what is CoLearner? What's the what's the behind the platform and the companies? And I will also talk a bit about the future of personalized collaborative learning space. Um, people think it's a, it's a new buzzword, it's a fashion and stuff like that, but there, there are more to it actually. So maybe I'll talk a bit about it and then I'll say, uh, Lastly, teaching millions. Yeah, that's uh, any good startup talk. People always uh, want to talk about changing the world and redefining stuff and like transforming learning. So uh, obviously, we are not an ex exception. So I'm going to talk talk about teaching millions. How we can use collaborative learning to teach millions. Really. So uh, let's get started, right? Um, so personalized collaborative learning. Yeah. So it's very simple terms. It's the best of both personalized and collaborative learning. It's basically somewhere here. Um, but, but unfortunately, because of a uh, lot of um, theoretical uh, um, research, which are kind of lagging behind the technology side of things, there are, there are many different definitions to uh, a personalized collaborative learning as a, as a concept. Um, but we can identify certain commonalities in all these definitions. We, in fact, we re recently wrote a blog post explaining the various definitions. So I'm not going to go in detail about the definitions. You can you can check that out on our blog. But I'm going to uh, dive into the commonalities. Basically, um, starting with how we learn. Um, everybody, both educational theorists and technologists, they, they seem to agree that the fundamentals of learning, how we learn, that has not changed. So we learn by reading, we learn by writing, we take notes. Maybe the medium has changed. Uh, oops, looks like my screen sharing has stopped. Great, I think we are back. Um, so yeah, like I said, um, fundamentals of learning, reading, writing, and taking notes, these have not changed. Maybe what has changed is the, the medium. Uh, maybe we read from laptops and tablets, ebooks, maybe we write uh, on devices, maybe we take notes on tablets. So maybe that, only that has changed, but the fu fundamentals behind them, they have not changed at all, which is uh, something everybody seems to agree. And the second thing we all know agree is that learning happens anytime and anywhere. It's not just restricted to your university um, campus or maybe only from Monday to Friday, from nine to five or whatever. It's, it's basically, uh, yeah, beyond all these things. Um, and the third thing we all uh, now starting to understand that students are learning differently. Learning is such a personal experience that no uh, two students are alike. For example, here is an example uh, about Lauren and William learning a set of concepts in mathematics. And um, yeah, both of them seem to take different paths. It's, it's a very personal experience. We cannot uh, um, generalize here. 
and also modern learners this is something i spoke about in my first coil talk um, modern learners they kind of collaborate a lot they're like network they uh, they think global they think internet basically so it's not like okay i will network with only my uh, university students or only with my university alumni anymore that that sort of thinking is gone it's it's collaboration it's like what what do people in india learn about this course what do people in the us learn about this or um, what about africa what's what sort of um, knowledge could i gain it from there it's that sort of thinking students are having this is again something uh, we we all kind of understand when you say when we say collaborative learning and st stuff like that um, and lastly the the teachers um, i wanted to uh, bring in teachers because in the in the last talk i, I kept emphasizing on students and learners and st stuff like that but obviously teachers play a main role right like any any uh, good technology uh, it has to be usable but by both students and teachers otherwise what's the point in building those technology now as part of um, collaborative learning it's, it's all becoming student center so what's happening is the teachers are they moving away from being an instructor uh, to being a facilitator so they're kind of kind of taking a back seat whereas the uh, the learners are uh, coming to the center from the periphery they are like okay we are active participants we are not going to be uh, passively sitting and listening to lectures anymore but we are going to be uh, contributing content we are going to be sharing ideas maybe uh, i will share case studies from my own uh, firm maybe i will bring in some ideas from my country so that's that's sort of a um, that's that sort of shift happening um, by the way one one common misconception is uh, yeah if you want to make learning active then you need to uh, invest in lots of technology like you need you need clickers you need uh, the the revolutionary whiteboard and stuff like that no that's that's not the case in fact some good good teachers they can make learning active even without technology um, i'll give you an example so for example when i was uh, a school student um, my teacher taught me uh, planetary movements and stuff like that by uh, by placing uh, bunch of students in the center of the class and like one of the student was behaving behaving like her so he was he was rotating and the uh, the other children were like running around it at, at various places kind of it ma made active and i still remember that class i still remember planetary motions in fact i can still uh, name all the planets in the correct order like yeah obviously i will include pluto but yeah that's that's gone now but um so, so it's it's an amazing way of making learning active without having to use any technology so some some teachers are capable of doing that whereas the other teachers uh, they rely on technology and lots of other things to uh, make learning active obviously in case of a blended learning format and online learning format like yeah you need you need technology because uh, all these uh, all these fanta fantastic student activity it's not going to work um, in the online space now i said technology now what is the role of technology um, really here like i said we need technology in both blended learning and online learning um, so obviously um, you might think that we the co learner being a technology company so we'll be saying yeah technology is everything you need technology you can't live without technology blah 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 um, in fact that's the kind of thinking uh, we saw back back in the states when I mean, especially from silicon valley right so people are like Ah, technology is everything. It's going to disrupt education. This, in fact, this was the uh, conversation in the last two years when when I when we when when I started talking to professors like Larry. It's like, oh, MOOCs. It's going to disrupt education. Oh, this. It's going to disrupt education. And then people were like, uh, technology is going to replace teachers. Like, yeah, teachers will be out of job if they have to they have to start utilizing all these cool online technologies. Otherwise, yeah, something is going to happen. And like, yeah, then there were. Uh, talks about how technology can predict problems with learning even before you and stuff like that yeah so these were some of the some of the kind of conversations i had um, let's see some evidence so this is from coursera for example um, yeah they were, they were very bold right like yeah we will we'll build technology to teach millions of students and blah 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 and we know the reality of it right so this is uh, sebastian thrun he is very bold he kind of accepted that yeah we don't educate people and we have a lousy product it's uh, it's amazingly clear so uh, there was hardly any innovation um, in a mooc so basically um, they 
took off the shelf products they, they packaged, packaged it together then they, they made up the sign up process ridiculously easy which is like yeah you just need an email address and then um, they put all the videos made it available free and then they're like yeah we're, we're teaching the world blah 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 yeah but um, yeah it's that that necessarily need not be the the, the right method um, so this is from um, Newton actually I I kind of love love Newton they have some some cool technologies but yeah so uh, statements like yeah we can predict failure in advance because we have access to a lot of data this this is kind of stretching everything to a large extent because the, the reality is that um, some students actually found adaptive learning techniques as, as a distraction in itself so um, so yeah this is education growth advices they found adaptive learning led to more disengagement obviously this disengagement the, the adaptive learning algorithms will pick up as problems or learning failures or whatever and then it will flag those students but in reality it's the technology that's the problem right not not the not the student or the learner um, in in a sense um, uh, my, my, my point of view and co learner point of view obviously is um, we should probably uh, think technology as a, as a tool really it's not like it's not going to replace anything we need teachers we need good professors we need uh, good curriculum content the, the the university as such is providing such a fantastic learning environment we need all of these but technology is, is a tool really um, I'm, I'm glad I brought up the word tool because yeah obviously tools for thought you might be wondering why we included that word in the title kind of, I've kind of brought it up um, so talking of tools obviously tools evolved I'm sorry to use the word evolution maybe uh, I have to think about using creationism or something but yeah I think in this context we can use evolution um, so the tools evolved so we were using stones and rocks and then we built better cutting tools better tools for construction and stuff like that and at one point these tools be became Kind of a basic needs in itself like for example this diy toolbox and i have not seen any house without such a toolbox and same way uh, tools for learners like pencils and pens and rubbers and these notepads and stuff like that by the way these, these tools are amazing for example this notepad here has an excellent battery life um, you can read it in any lighting condition you can take it outside and on a sunny day you can read it on, on a night you like uh, you need a small lamp you can read it amazing uh, visibility and stuff like that right we can learn a lot of things from such low-tech uh, ideas so uh, the, yeah these these tools at one point became basic needs for everything for for housing for learning and then tools started slowly started helping us so so tools for example reduce the load uh, students used to carry um, this was me actually back in India in the uh, 90s and yeah now obviously when my boy goes to school in a couple of years time it'll be some something like this maybe ca carrying few notebooks and a tablet and stuff like that it's, it's kind of an evolution nice evolution and we know um, modern learners and like like my boys he's, he's technology savvy he started using technology from the year one um, is is collaborating and um, I'm, I'm sure as he grows collaboration will be, be is going to become such a basic norm we need um, tools that will help you with collaborate and learn so this is where we come in so co-learner so what is co-learner um, we are really a collection of learning and ideation tools so we uh, uh, we support all devices out there so you can have co-learner on your phone on your tablet on your laptop um, we basically make learning collaborative and fun that's that's all we are all about but but we have some pedagogical backing so partly because of the way I started um, so co learner was based on my uh, uh, dissertation on massive online education so I was trying to research about pedagogy for modern learners and then I was actively collaborating with the likes of Larry and others to uh, build each of these tools around specific use cases um, so we, we have some strong backing with pedagogy and each of these tools we built are carefully planned out. Um, so what can we do with co-learner like Larry, Larry explained. Um, students, professors, anybody they have just one place for all their content. So the content could be videos, it could be PDF, links, annotations, notes, 
um, yeah, any type of content, you get just, just one fantastic uh, uh, interface for all your content. Um, and then we didn't stop there actually. Um, so that, that was September, I uh, launched CoLearner and I said I'm going to re redefine collaborative learning. And then we started doing a lot of cool things on top of it. So we built uh, uh, new exciting learning tools, starting with this tool called collaborative curation. It's, it's amazing. So basically you get this blank canvas where you can collaboratively put any sort of content in. It could be a YouTube video, it could be a PDF, document, in fact, yeah, kind of 80 different file formats. You don't have to download anything. It's all completely web-based. It's It will work on across all your devices. Um, it's all real time. So any content you had and um, anything you edit and stuff like that, it's all real time. I can, can quickly show you. For example, this is the future of personalized collaborative learning topic. Um, yeah, I've just added one content here, which is my top talk and yeah. As and when I can add new content using this this plus button, yeah, every, everybody who is who is on this topic page will see stuff in real time and things like that. Um, then we built a revolutionary mind map tool that works purely on a browser. It's amazing. Um, so, for example, you can use this mind map mapping tool as a student to plan assignments to. Uh, um, plan any group, group kind of activity. I mean, it's a, it's a personal learning thing and teachers can same way use it to uh, plan their course, plan their lessons, whatever. Again, it's collaborative. So you can invite collaborators and um, you guys can do it together. For example, this is that interface I was talking about. Um, so you can add, create notes, you can say uh, uncloud and you can say some ideas, blah, blah, blah. Um, so it's, it's very cool and you can can do cool things like in drag and drop and stuff like that yeah i'm, I'm sure when you sign up to co-learner you can explore and learn more about these tools um then we built a real-time discussion which is it's it's very contextual so uh, basically uh, the discussions typically what happens is uh, people usually put up a link on the on the side of their um moodle course or whatever and then um, discussions are usually treated as a separate activity. So you go to discussion forums, you're completely losing context. You don't know what you're learning and stuff like that. Whereas we made discussions contextual. So you can anchor discussions to a particular learning material, maybe to a particular paragraph in a, in a PDF or maybe to a particular point in a video. And then you can spin off a discussion from there and then you can have a real time conversation with the uh, the other students or the teachers and stuff like that and we built a lot of cool things on top of it like for example here it shows automatic media detection where you copy paste a link maybe to a youtube video in this case it or it automatically displays that as a youtube video and like you don't have to um, you don't have to do anything to watch the video um so that's real-time discussion then we uh, started integrating with all the cloud providers out there it's, it's pretty cool so uh, yeah we don't in fact we love everybody we love dropbox we love google we love box so no matter where your learning materials are you can actually pull all your content to co-learner so you get one interface like i said for all your content um and this is something very cool that's going to come up it's called collaboration boards it's um it's a revolutionary way of doing things like brainstorming online um for example this is how it will look on a, on a single page, you can have a um, real-time topic uh, curator widget here. You can have a whiteboard widget here. You can have a mind mapping widget. You can resize all these widgets. You can add and remove um, widgets like this. And and we believe this is going to change the way people brainstorm and build new ideas online. It's, it's a new ideation tool. Um, yeah, we have not stopped here. We are kind of actively building tools. And then one fine point will be here. Uh, opening up the APIs so new developers can build tools that that sits on top of CoLearner. So it's kind of a platform thinking, just like how uh, Apple gave you an iPad and then developers were able to build apps on top of it. We are kind of bringing that kind of a thinking to learning. So uh, there'll, be a, there'll be a very generic learning platform, which is going to provide you real-time capabilities collaboration capabilities and you'll have few widgets and then developers can use these uh, capabilities
to think of new ideas i have i have no idea what developers would come up with but that's that's what we are working towards um now in terms of where we sit in the market we are, we are kind of sitting alone actually um there's a lot of buzz around this space informal learning like people are like okay uh, everybody's learning outside of universities uh, informal learning is great blah 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 and then like yeah a lot of people a lot of investment are happening here mm, I, yeah, I was kind enough to put social networks but uh, social networks yeah the kind of distraction the kind of cat pictures you have to go through uh, maybe you can start here so uh, we have social curation ideas uh, to the likes of learnest and cora and gibbon they they're good they they kind of uh, provide you a informal learning experience it's, it's great but if you are if you're starting to think about any sort of serious learning which is which is as a learner i choose to do a course or i choose to join a mooc or i choose to use uh, a personalized learning platform like mind map to learn what i want that's that's where i believe all the serious learning starts learning that could ultimately lead to something uh, whereas all these informal learnings are are great you can you can claim that you know something about a lot of things and then like you can you can gain um, um maybe facebook likes and stuff like that but outside of that yeah, if you want some serious accreditation or anything this is where it starts um yeah we, we know all these online courses provider uh, linda udemy they have been in the market for a while they're they're very good they provide they provide content really but they don't care about whether you can collaborate and learn that content and stuff like that yeah so it's it's a one off one off course delivery but as mooks um it, it it kind of sounded interesting two years ago two years ago where they they said okay we'll give you lots of courses but um i don't want to go in detail i kind of covered in my last talk in september the fundamental flaws and mooks and stuff like that um here connected and mind tap and applia these guys did something amazing uh, 10 years back where uh, instead of say doing a single course called finance 101 you can actually learn the topic called finance so basically uh, you can learn as much you want and these content uh, spanned across books spanned across courses and stuff like that so you can basically depending on your time you can you can either learn a lot or you can uh, you can learn broadly things like that but but unfortunately the idea was great but the execution was not so great um for example connected is from megrail so their platform obviously will contain content only from megrail books and like mind tap and applia this applia i think is from singage so basically they they were their victim of their own success um, i i i came across this obviously there are some inspirations about making learning personal and stuff whereas with with colan we kind of made it open we said okay you can bring in content from anywhere um, and then we'll provide you the same personalized learning capability or, or better personalized learning capability these guys pioneered and then we'll build amazing collaborating cap collaborative capabilities like larry said um, with google docs for example you can um, it's like a collaborative word processor the, the google docs and then the collaborative spreadsheet but yeah but that's not learning right for learning you need more variety of content you need brainstorming idea brainstorming widgets you need discussion widgets so those sort of things so we're kind of stretching the collaborative learning space itself and we are tr trying to excel in both the dimension personalized collaborative learning so like i said we're kind of sitting alone here in the market maybe uh, in the in the coming years there'll be more competition and like more people will be trying to push us to uh, innovate and stuff like that um Okay, so now I spoke about personalized collaborative learning and uh, co-learner. Obviously, the, the the title of the topic is like, what's the future of personalized collaborative learning, right? Um, I say future is great actually. So we did a brainstorm again using our own brainstorming tool. Um, this is the sort of ideas dimensions we were able to think about. So, for example, for to start with, there'll be a uh, the evolution of tools it will continue to evolve and then there'll be evolution evolution of the uh, personalized learning part so there'll be a uh, kind of something interesting happening there then there'll be um, improvements in the collaboration side of things right so three dimensions let me go into detail into each of these dimensions now um, starting with future of tools so i mentioned here uncloud and wearable 
So basically, I believe that in the in the future, uh, there'll be more focus on tools that you can carry and wear. Um, th this is kind of cyclic in a sense how, uh, for example, as devices became powerful, as desktops became powerful, we moved away from mainframes to using individual desktops. The exact same way as uh, as devices, tablets and everything become more powerful, we will start moving away from the cloud to using individual devices for, for learning and teaching. Um, this I'm calling it as uncloud. So basically uh, you move away from cloud and you start looking at devices that you can carry and where obviously uh, th there'll be some primary driving factors. Uh, in case of mainframes, it was the cost and stuff like that. With cloud, everything is free or it's uh, yeah, it's cheap. But but I'm saying maybe the the discussions around privacy and data ownership. Um, I'm sure s some of you might be here following the debates around uh, um, the, the the likes of Khan Academy and Google Apps possibly uh, selling your data to th third parties and using it for advertising and stuff like that. Especially pri privacy around Google Apps. Like Google recently promised not to. Um, parse any educational content for advertising and stuff like that. So it's, it's kind of uh, has created a debate in itself. I, but I see uh, these debates becoming more extreme, more widespread and people starting to think about devices that they can own and protect and stuff like that. So um, we're kind of uh, making a bet on it. So I'm going to, uh, mm, I'm very excited to announce our first product in this space. It's called Learnbox. Uh, obviously, when we started CoLearner, we just started like everyone else. We uh, said we are a we are a cloud-based um, collaborative learning company. But I'm now making a bet that the future of CoLearner will be a box like this. It's called a Learn Box. It's the entire CoLearner platform that can run on your uh, that can run from the palm of your hands. It's actually here. So this is a Learn Box. It's this simple. Um, you can carry it, you can carry it in your purse, you can, maybe if your pocket is big enough, you can put it there. Um, it's very small, but it this is still extremely powerful. Actually, in fact, this small box has uh, more than 100 innovations in it. Uh, let me talk about a few. Uh, to start with, all you have to do is just turn on the box and use it. You don't have to do anything else. You don't have to configure, you don't have to do anything. And this small box can support up to 50 students. So all, all the excellent real-time collaborative learning, collaborative teaching capability in the palm of your hand. And the beauty is all these data sits in the box. So you're not going to, go, um, the, the, the data is not going to spill over to the internet and stuff like that. It's, everything is going to be in the box. And all these data can be accessed directly from the box, even if you don't have a network, even if you don't have an internet. So we managed to squeeze in a Wi-Fi router in, a, in this such a small box. So you turn it on, it automatically turns on a Wi-Fi router as well. So you connect directly to the box. Um, we use a technology called 802.11.ac. Uh, it's, it's one of the modern technologies out there. It's, it's, it's going to give an amazing wireless speed and stuff like that. So 50 students directly connecting to this small box. There'll be no, there'll be no difference in performance. They'll be able to do everything in real time. And it's amazing. Um, and we also started building some cool capabilities on top of it, right? So starting with smart offline mode, for example, I said with CoLearner, you can uh, you can add content from YouTube and stuff like that, right? So all you have to do is paste the link. With smart offline mode, we will automatically download that content and make it available offline. So you can imagine having this box in your campus, you're curating topics, and then you carry the box, you can, you can take it to anywhere. It could be a remote, remote place. It could be a school with no network internet access. And then you turn it on and all your content will be there uh, available for use on offline. And like, yeah, I don't have to bother whether the, the, the place you go has a network or not and stuff like that. And we are also working hard to make the entire thingy battery powered. Put a star, obviously uh, you, need a, you need a larger battery to start with but yeah I, i'm sure as technology progresses as battery technology improves you will be able to carry even the battery as well and then obviously yeah we'll be uh, providing free software updates to this box for life and the best part is this device like it's like I showed you it's, it's available starting today so you can buy you can buy prototypes starting today if you're interested 
Um, so that's Learnbox. That's our first product. Um, thinking the future will be uncloud and stuff like that. Then secondly, I want to talk about wearables, right? So um, wearables like Google Glass and the, the Pebble Watch and stuff like that. Yeah? So again, is that a, is that a buzzword? Is that a is that a fashion? Um, only time can say. But th this is what we are thinking about wearables, right? Uh, let's imagine a typical class. So this is a class bunch of students. Uh, if you're new to this class, first and foremost, you'll be asking yourself, okay, well, how much do I know about these students? How much, how much prior knowledge do these students have in this subject? Um, what sort of language proficiency they have? And can they understand my English? So you'll be obviously having a lot of questions. And then as you, as you teach, as you get to know them, you kind of understand a bit. Um, but that may not be enough because you, you want to know how well the students perform in the, uh, the assignments and stuff like that, right? So, um, so obviously we rely on things like learning analytics. So for example, I have um, screenshots from Moodle and Blackboard. Um, so learning analytics, yeah, so we, uh, we display tables and charts on various parameters. We say this is how the, uh, the student's performance was in the last assignment or this is how a particular student did uh, in few assignments and stuff like that right so that's learning analytics um, i think we have a talk about learning analytics the future of learning analytics as part of this coil series i think uh, yeah, yeah i'll be very excited to uh, to join and stuff like that mm, the, the the problem with learning analytics is that they're very very hard they're too complex to use in a sense if i'm a teacher like yeah, I, I, I'm not so good at reading these charts. Uh, only bankers are good and good at reading charts, right? That, that, that's why they're getting paid a lot. But I'm a, I'm a teacher, yeah? So I, I want something much more easier to use. Also, like, this is like, I have to read these charts and then I have to come back to my class and then these, teach these people. And like, so who is whom, which chart does this uh, student belong to and stuff like that. It's, it's very hard to use, yeah? So the, the, the reality is that, I, yeah, I'm, I'm sure you might agree. Um, I disagree, but not many teachers use any of these learning analytics. So it's, it's, it's usually the teaching assistants or you need use some technology folks uh, who are good at using technology and stuff like that. So we ask them to uh, take a look at this learning, learning analytics for us and then they come and they send us a report by email and then like we, we usually don't bother to check emails and stuff like that. So the, the reality is that uh, learning analytics are great upcoming, but nobody uses it. Uh, to the best extent um, and obviously as a, as a startup uh, we are late to this game right so we are late uh, we don't have learning analytics on co-learner yet um, but we want to leapfrog all these completely we don't we don't believe this is the future we just want to leapfrog we are going to leapfrog all the way to what is what we see is real-time analytics you can imagine something like a google glass so you wear it and you see your students and in real time you get details about their prior knowledge, their assignment performance, so that the platform can actually assess their, their learnings both uh, during and outside the course, so it could be across, so the, if, the, if the platform is as good as CoLearner that students use during and after the course, obviously uh, you have all the data and then you make those data seamless, very easy to use. And all you have to do is just wear a glass and then look at people and like, yeah, you, you know completely about them and then um, with this information, you can start personalizing your lecture and you can start grouping these students uh, in relevant groups and you can, you can th start thinking about uh, a, a new pedagogical models, right? new ways of teaching. Um, obviously, like I said, yeah, there'll be questions of privacy and data ownership and stuff like that. But yeah, but um, I believe this is going to be the future and uh, this is what as, even as a startup, we're thinking, yes, we're starting to think already, um, real-time analytics. Uh, then coming to personalization space, um, I'm kind of predicting two forms of personalization, starting with what, what we call as unbundled course. Um, I was collaborating on a white paper with Pearson. Coming, so um, popular paper, you should you should check it out if, if you're not done it. Um, in the paper, we spoke about unbundling universities. So basically you unbundle 
uh, university you start uh, segre segregating the individual businesses out and like um, you're trying to reduce the cost and stuff like that whereas this is like a like an evolution from them where you are starting to think as a course uh, starting to think a course as basically set of competencies and you're starting to unbundle and then giving the uh, option to the student to personalize these competencies so they can mix and match to create new uh, new uh, structure if they want um, so i'm kind of uh, i'm kind of predicting that 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 sort of uh, um, stuff is going to happen and then there'll be more emphasis on situated learning so basically uh, more problem based uh, inquiry based so, uh, so for, for example one of the uh, one of the example i uh, heard recently in a program um, where the teacher predicted that students could be simulating a rocket launch or maybe uh, landing a lunar craft in the moon so in, in that process they're going to learn concepts in physics mathematics uh, things like wind and like yeah statistics um, even soft skills like yeah talking to people communication and stuff like that um, it's kind of uh, yeah it's th these are legitimate learnings just that they, they span across subjects and ideas and things like that so instead of just learning physics alone or learning mathematics alone like you're placing all these concepts together and making learning more more situated and more personal um, so th these sort of um, yeah ideas i'm as as technology evolves and as as tools like co-learner make everything very easy to use and make all these structuring very easy um, i'm sure uh, we will see more pedagogical models and lastly um, talking about collaborative learning what's the huge future of collaborative learning um, there are two interesting uh, research areas on collaborative learning first is the ability to analyze collaborative learning so how people collaborate how do they discuss what's the uh, what's the requirement for an effective collaborative learning and stuff like that so analyzing collaborative learning possibly in real time and then secondly, it's, uh, once you analyze, basically you're trying to improve collaborative learning, right? This could be through intervention. Um, the intervention could be automated or manual and stuff like that. Um, these two are actually uh, the research topic of Professor Marcela Burge of Penn State University. And we're exploring possible collaboration to uh, rethink this space and see how co fits in the research and stuff like that. So this is obviously a um, something we can expect in the future and now the last part right so I spoke about personalized collaborative learning I spoke about co-learner I can kind of shit about what we think is the future of personalized collaborative learning right now the important question how do you use personalized collaborative learning this new paradigm to teach millions right um, let's see what 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 we have on the internet or what we have in general now yeah so this is this is Khan Academy in TED um, so these people they, their idea is to produce short videos on on various subjects you produce videos you make them available for free and then like once the videos gets millions of views it implies you have taught millions of people right so that's that's Khan Academy that's TED yeah these people's vision um, then comes Coursera and these people building content marketplace like yeah that's the that's the new buzzword content marketplace everybody is a content marketplace now even Udacity is a content marketplace the idea is that you will have a website where you can find courses from any university that's Coursera if it is anyone like it, that's that's Skillshare it's it's as simple as that right um, we don't know whether these are these are good ideas whether these these can really be used to teach millions of people but we believe that if you want to truly teach millions of people you just have to teach 100 people first and then you provide these 100 people with tools to teach so tools like co-learner tools like this new learn box each of these new teachers can use to teach 100 people and that's how you collaborate and you learn from each other collaborative learning that this is our vision we see collaborative learning as the future so if you wanted to solve 
educational problems, the, the lack of teachers uh, plaguing emerging markets, the, uh, the rising cost of education in the developed countries. We should start thinking about how do we make learning collaborative. I'm sorry. So, um, so that's that's co learner. That's the future of personalized collaborative learning. And thank you. Prabhu, that was me, by the way, introducing the. Uh, that was the way to sort of draw to a close there, Prabhu. Sorry about that. I hit the better wrong. Better than applause. Yeah, better than applause. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I should let uh, Brad manage the technology here. Uh, thank you for uh, for that overview and your thoughts on on where things are going. I have some questions on the, the uh, chat box, and so I want to direct your attention to um, to one of those questions, Prabhu, and that is. Can you explain why you think co-learner is alone in positioning itself into that quadrant when you had your matrix up there? Why there are no other uh, um, companies that you would put in that same space? Can you define that a little bit? Yeah, this is, uh, this is another question um, someone else asked recently as well. The, the reality is that we don't know. Um, we don't know why people are more obsessed with making learning more informal, making uh, this informal learning more collaborative and st stuff like that. That's where, that's where everybody is very excited about. Um, but I, I see there is, a, there is a vacant space on the top, which is like making both learning personal and collaborative. Maybe, uh, maybe somebody might have taken a look and they might have seen there is not enough value. Maybe, maybe I, will, I will not be able to make billions out of it and stuff like that. Or, um, or they, there might be players, but they could be calling themselves as something else totally. So, uh, yeah. So I, I would say those those sort of reasons. But the, but but the point I uh, made even to the the other person, he happened to be an investor actually. I said, in, don't if you think about it, we 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 are we are we are seeing that we know that learning is such a personal experience. We know that modern learners collaborate on everything. So it's a, it's a natural evolution that you're trying to uh, produce technologies. You're trying to trying to produce a set of tools that's going to make learning both personal and collaborative at the same time. Um, mm -hmm. Whether this is a big enough market to make a lot of money, yeah, only time can tell. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good, good, thank you. And um, I know that you're open to explore as as we bump into new technologies and ones that may look like they're in this space. Uh, you are tracking those and understanding their capabilities as well in order to sort of gauge where where co-learner is going. Um, yep. So let me let me open it up to the audience and see if we have other questions for Prabhu. Um, and I will. Uh, so while Grit is writing, let me let me ask you one, Prabhu. That is uh, that's been on my mind a lot. It has to do with um, my question has to do with the, the relationship between co-learner and a learning management system. Mm -hmm. So, for example, the courses I teach are are actually not in Angel, which is Penn State's learning management tool. It's actually in Moodle, for other reasons. When I'm in Moodle and I'm talking about concepts or the faculty because I co-teach this course are talking about concepts I want my learners to be immediately engaged in dialogue around a portion of the text as you said a perhaps a paragraph or a comment or something um, okay. how what's that integration like between say Moodle or Angel and the functionalities of uh, co-learner how do they relate correct, correct. so we, we we will be integrating with with an, with an LMS, so that, that's, that's the kind of uh, market, uh, route to market we are thinking. So we're, we're not going to replace any LMS, we're not a replacement for Moodle or Blackboard, but we will be integrating with these and then we'll, we'll kind of make it easy for you to uh, add such tools to an existing uh, LMS. So, uh, so yeah, that's, that, that, that'll be it. It'll be very, very simple, maybe a um, couple of lines of JavaScript code that you include somewhere, and then you get this this magical functionality. And then obviously we will 
the 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 the, the entire platform you can also access independently of an LMS. So that's the kind of um, road to market we are thinking about. Okay, so that, that integration is an important part. My colleague David has a question for you as well. I just wanted to follow up on the importance of that concept. Actually, just this morning I have an email from our provost reminding us about the last day of uh, attendance requirement for financial aid, for federal financial aid. And, um, okay. you know, this, the government is really coming serious about that. And then as our faculty use resources outside of our LMS, it becomes almost impossible to track that kind of data. So the more we can integrate into one system where we can you know, provide those kinds of data that are required for auditing, it's, it becomes very important. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, I mean, that, in, in fact, one of the bold decision I took, um, in fact, I wouldn't say it's bold, but one of the decisions. So um, on, on the very first day, people are like, okay, are you going to uh, give Moodle run for their money. I said, no, we can't replace because models, they've been under development for decades now. So there are a lot of thinking already in space, uh, in, in place. But but we, we see certain problems with, with these models and Blackboard. Maybe co-learner could, could act as a, as a supplement really for the next few years until co-learner evolves or a uh, lot of tools that get developed uh, on top of co-learner evolves. And then finally, we have a replacement product. But till then, it will be like a product that will get integrated with, with an existing system. Um, so we will make make the integration as easy and quick as possible. So that's that's that will be the focus. Prabhu, can I ask you um, another question about sort of the vision uh, of CoLearner in a larger scale? It seems to me that there's a temptation that you you can throw everything in the kitchen sink into one product. And by doing that, you perhaps um, uh, water down the capabilities because it, it, you know, it not only does word processing, but it also does expel, you know, spreadsheets, and it also does presentations. How do you, um, how do you envision co-learner identifying the right focus niche, if you will, in the education uh, ecosystem, to, so that so that you don't become, you know, a learning management system? For example, correct, correct, yeah. So, yeah, like I said, we're not going to, uh, yeah, we're not, we're not going to build all kind of features, all kind of, um, all kind of functionalities out there. Um, we are kind of, so everything, every, every time we start building a, a tool, we ask ourselves this question: How am I going to make learning collaborative and fun? So uh, that's how, that's why we built the collaborative curation widget because. Adding stuff onto Google Docs or Dropbox are not fun. It's like mm. it's like your Windows Explorer in the cloud. What's what's so cool about it? Yeah. So we said, how do we uh, how do we enhance this um, enhance this curation? And then we said, okay, we, we'll make it real time. We'll 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 integrate with with another tool called Discussion. So as you curate content, you'll be able to discuss. You'll be able to annotate. You'll be able to share annotations and stuff like that. Right? So um, this will be the focus. Uh, yeah, for, for one or two years. But obviously, uh, uh, we are trying to keep the platform very generic. So what happens is, like I said, every single capability we are building within CoLearner, we will expose it to developers, and developers can use it to build new tools on top of it. Even researchers can use it to extract information. Like, for example, this possible collaboration with Professor Marcella. Uh, she can extract the, the, the data in a format she needs for her research mm -hmm. and she can analyze how people learn collaboratively and st stuff like that and she can she can produce statistical uh, information with the data and stuff like that. So a as a technology platform we will keep it generic as a as a product it will be focused on collaborative learning. Okay. Let me see from our audience if uh, I have I have a few more questions, but I want to make sure we hear from the audience. Uh, and you've heard my questions somewhat before, because because we, as we've exchanged dialogue. Um, Definitely, yeah. If you have a question, would you uh, feel free to uh, post it into the chat box, and we'll make sure we relay it to uh, Prabhu. Um, so while there, where we're waiting for some input there, Prabhu, let me ask you a question. If I'm somebody who's interested in coming to the BYOP next Tuesday. Which is at 10 a.m., Brad? Yes. Yeah. Thanks, David. Uh, 10 a.m. in which building? Are we in? 
Fred's going to check for us where we are because uh, Prabhu's arriving in State College on Sunday. What if I'm coming to that program? What should I bring with me? What what help me help me think about my materials or or what's going to be most helpful so that when I leave that program, I have some sort of an output to show. Yeah. For first, first, obviously, you have to bring your problem. Uh, so we yeah, if you can basically yeah. Uh, yeah, if you can basically try to explain to a techie like me what your problem is, how uh, how you try to resolve the problems, maybe using some of the existing tools out there, and whether you found anything interesting out of this exercise, and or what's the sort of new tool you're envisioning. Um, basically, so all these sort of uh, information, yeah, that will definitely help, and then we can we can collaboratively try to figure out a possible solution. Um, yeah, maybe co-learner may not be able to solve all, all the problems, but yes. yeah, at least if we, if we can identify these and then yeah, we can st start thinking about technologies and tools and s stuff like that. So, yeah. so if I bring a problem to you and it's pretty clear to you that um, co-learner cannot be a part of the solution, you'll tell me that as well. You'll just say, this is not for, or... Definitely. yeah. Okay. Definitely, yeah. Appreciate that. Um, yeah. I'm watching, we only have a couple more minutes. Uh, just a couple points. The BYOP on Tuesday is at 10 a.m. It is in the 329 building, which is uh, up, the, uh, up the road here in Innovation Park. It's the last building on your right. Uh, as you come into the Innovation Park, and um, we will be in the 115 room of uh, 329. We've got a, um, an event planned where we hope it will be very hands-on, very engaged. Uh, we have lunch that's being provided as well, so we hope you'll be able to enjoy, uh, uh, enjoy a little bit of uh, socializing and problem solutions and, and exploring whether co-learner is a potential part of that solution or not. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Prabhu, love to meet everyone. And with that, is there anything else? Uh, anything else you'd like to share with us about uh, CoLearner? We're excited to have you come join us at Penn State. Definitely. Yeah. So when I come in, yeah, you will be the first to get, get access to this new LearnBox prototype, and like, yeah, it'll be fun and games. Very cool. All right. That's very good. All right, folks. Well, we look forward to seeing as many of you who may be able to join us next week on Tuesday. Uh, if you have further questions for Prabhu, you can certain, certainly get a hold of me. I can make a connection for you. Uh, Prabhu, I thank you for your, uh, your contribution today to a COIL conversation. I'm really excited about this product. I have a few more ideas for you now, and uh, we'll pick up on those when you're with us next week. But um, uh, thank you for joining us, and thank you to the audience for taking your time today. All right, so we will see you next time in State College.